Hey everybody, welcome to Weld Fever Wednesdays. On today's episode, we're gonna do a little bit of horizontal welding with the E7018 electrode. So stick with me, here we go. Hey, just as a reminder, we're having a special for Weld Fever Wednesdays. The special is gonna run through the end of March, and the special is on the Weld Fever cap and of course the stickers. Uh, the cap is going for $14.99 right now. You have to enter the promo code WEDNESDAY. WEDNESDAY is the promo code. Go to WellFever.com and click on the store. You'll get this for $14.99 and we'll throw in a sticker for you also. So make sure you support the show and we appreciate it. Okay, so uh, on this one here, we're going to use the cruciform that we used uh, last week. Uh, when we did a little bit of uh, flat E7018 and so we've already partially built this up. Now what you want to do when you're doing horizontal is a very good idea to start at the bottom and work your way up. Why? Well very simply because you're going to be fighting gravity. If you start up here uh, more than likely your puddle is going to slightly drip and you're going to have this kind of weird uncontrollable edge that you're always going to be fighting with if you start here, it's logical, it makes sense. You start here, you make yourself a nice little shelf so that the subsequent, the next bead, will sit right on top of it beautifully. You gotta really watch the puddle on this though because that is the key to laying down an effective weld that doesn't have excessive lines in it. Uh, these little overlapping lines are always a problem with horizontal, but if you really watch that puddle and make sure that it gets over, and hits that other previous bead well, you should be okay. So let's go ahead and give it a shot and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, light up here. And as you can see, I, uh, as I usually do, I lit up ahead of the weld slightly so that I can come over to the very edge of it. And by the time that I do, uh, the, hopefully the electrode is nice and warm and uh, you'll have good fusion and decent penetration. All right, uh, obviously doing a horizontal weld the entire time I'm going to be fighting gravity. So uh, you can kind of see the action that I'm doing here. I'm trying to keep it up on the top and then just slightly coming down a little bit just to allow the puddle to come down and to grab the bottom surface so that we have decent fusion uh, with the bottom plate. Uh, it's important that you either have adequate amperage or that your piece be preheated so that you have good fusion. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. If your plate is cold or your amperage is too low, especially in this position, you will find that uh, uh, you will have poor fusion. The reason for that is actually quite simple. Uh, you're fighting gravity so much and you're having to manipulate and move the puddle often in order for it to not drip. Uh, that fusion can be a problem. So it's got to be warm enough, but however, there is a fine line. You can't go uh, completely uh, bonkers and go the other way because then you'll definitely have something dripping on you. So it's definitely tough to get right into the range there, but my recommendation is about midway into what the uh, manufacturer's recommended amperage range is. Okay, real quick, we're going to do another one here. Again, I lit up in front of it. And now that we've laid the first bead down, we have a little shelf in which to help us uh, be able to lay that bead in there and prevent uh, the bead from actually uh, leaking down or flowing down past it. Uh, I try to move at a decent rate but obviously not too fast because I don't want to have any undercut and I do want to have proper fusion so I have to limit uh, the speed at which I travel and again as I've always said and I will continue to say watching the puddle is everything. If you watch the puddle and you watch to make sure that it is filling in properly that it's you know, not leaving any type of undercut or gaps, and that you are able to maintain it without it flowing over, you should be fine. Here I had to stop because I ran out of electrode, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and grind that and uh, clean it up. Remember, if you run out of electrode and you have to restart, you must clean off the area, at least the first few inches of area where you plan to restart. Uh, you cannot restart over old slaggy stuff. Uh, the only exception to that is if you're able to immediately restart, which rarely happens. So here's the restart. We start ahead of it so that by the time we come back to where we finished off and left off the last weld, uh, the electrode is nice and hot, and that way we have proper fusion, and we'll end up with a nice 
uh, restart that is barely noticeable and everything fused well. Let's take a look and see how it came out. Also, uh, in fact, this is a good opportunity to point out that you should let your slag cool fully. You do not ever want to take the slag off when it's cherry red hot like that. The slag is providing a purpose. It has a purpose, I should say, and that is to protect the molten puddle from outside contaminants, namely air. If you take it off prematurely when it's still hot, uh, then you're basically going to be undoing that process and defeating the purpose of the slag in the first place. So make sure you leave that slag on for a good amount of time. Okay, since I've already shown you two beads at uh, real speed, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up now so we can get through this. Um, basically, I'm doing the same thing over and over again now. Uh, we have the shelf on which to uh, lay the subsequent bead on, and so that makes life a little bit easier. We still have to make sure to have our timing right and to make sure that we fuse and uh, properly uh, uh, have good penetration and whatnot. We don't want to go too fast. We don't want to go too slow, as I've stated before. But anyhow, this will give you an opportunity to watch a little bit more of it and see what you think. puddle is key to everything. You have to be able to see it and you have to be able to see what it's doing. As I'm traveling here, and I mentioned this before, I'm just watching that puddle and I'm watching it come down, drip down and grab that next edge and then coming up and playing the up and down seesaw kind of uh, battle with gravity as I go. But I don't want to let that puddle go down too far, otherwise it's going to drip over and be a mess. So I have to be constantly watching it, constantly monitoring to make sure that it drips down enough but just enough not too much so that's the that's the tip that's the trick the secret if there is such a secret uh, just make sure you watch the puddle that's probably the number one most important thing of any kind of weld welding is keep your eye on the puddle and just watch what it's doing as you're moving along hey thanks for joining us on another episode of weld fever Make sure to stay tuned for next week's uh, episode. We're going to do something really special on the show. So for all of you that follow us, uh, make sure you catch next Wednesday. It's going to be a real great one. Thanks again. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.